Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and if you're new, thanks for joining. So this is November. Um, I'm doing things a little bit different this month. Um, obviously, I'm really tapping into these kind of uh, more mysterious, um, hidden, darker energies of Scorpio energy. You know, um, Scorpio is a very interesting season, you guys, and I have a Scorpio Midheaven. I have a Scorpio North Node, so around this time every year, I I'm definitely... I definitely transform in, in ways that I'm just completely reborn, you know, as a person. And, and this is true for everyone. This is true for every sign. So transformation, death, rebirth, renewal, purity, um, definitely emotional transformation. Very, very important around these times, right? Uh, I'm sure you, all, you guys can all feel the intense energies here, especially emotionally. So it's very interesting here that... We're already in November, um, strongly approaching December. Also, guys, really sorry the videos are late. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about it, and I kind of like that my videos come out later because it's it's when all the other videos are uploaded, kind of like all the other tarot readers have um, uploaded their videos, and, and some of them are doing the mid-months around here. So, you know, my readings tend to be kind of the mid-month. But I like that because when I record, I have a lot of energy to work with already. So when we speak, we're, we speak towards the middle of the month where I can really hone in on some of the energies that you guys have felt already. And that can kind of come out for the beginning of the reading and then I touch on the, the ending of the month. Just know that it's okay to watch my videos at any time because the way that I read, um, I've done a lot of personal readings um, on people and I tend to see that my readings are futuristic so just know that what the information that you receive in my videos this month they go into December as well and I will be speaking to you guys in December um, I was really really sick my throat actually has started to hurt again so yeah good thanks great <laughs> but yeah um, definitely takes a lot of work to talk for hours at a time and I was deathly sick in the beginning of the month so I wasn't even able to start these videos until pff, around I don't know, I want to say around the 10th or something like that. And I'm going to have a chance to upload them very soon, so that's great. Um, other than being sick and everything like that, I'm just thinking that divine timing. You know, um, we talk when we do, and I really look forward to it every month. Scorpio season is all about your intuition, okay? So the readings that I'm doing this month, especially with me having a north node and me being a water sign, I'm extremely affected by these energies and I have no choice but to transform around these times. I'm seeing a lot of readers on YouTube really following their intuition around this month and doing what we call intuitive readings. So um, I did a little bit of that this month for you guys' messages. Really, really powerful messages coming out this month for everyone. So I hope they're relatable and helpful in some way. But you have to understand that with Scorpio energy, it really gives me the power to dig deep into your subconscious and it, it dig deep into your energy so that the information that comes out are deep subconscious hidden problems going on in your life right and, and some people aren't going to want to relate to those things because it's pretty intimate you know scorpio energy has everything to do with intimacy um it is the eighth house and usually you know this is the time of year where everything that we want to keep hidden at a subconscious level is completely aired out scorpio is a purging energy so it really purges out anything that isn't pure. It purges out anything that, that is needs to transform. And I, I really love this time of year because we're, we're approaching Sagittarius season, um, which is very light and, and it's a very expansive time, right? November, a very powerful month. So yeah, the readings, guys, um, I'm, I'm working, I tried to do an eight card spread for most of you. Um, so I'm using the Wisdom of the House of Night deck, of course, because that's very Scorpio. And then I'll be using regular tarot to clarify your cards. So we start out with pretty much four cards there um, that symbolize your energy for this month. And then we do clarifiers, which is always nice to get even a little bit more insight with the energies that we, we, we receive from spirit. So for the most part, guys, I really just wanted to work with these energies. Another cool thing about these readings is that... 
um, a part of the theme that I'm doing this month, besides the black lipstick, of course, is um, I wanted to record at nighttime. Um, it didn't really dawn on me um, until this season that I've never recorded tarot readings at night. I've always done it this this far with um, in the light, you know, and then I'm worried about um, when the sun's going to go down and I'm limited to how many videos I can do. I'm a night owl. I stay up really late. You know, I'm staying up till like 5 a.m. every night and that's just how I am as a Pisces. I was born around that time, so I just like to stay up late, guys. I'm a night owl for sure. And, um, you know, there's something there about the nights because a lot, a lot of different energies presented themselves to me. So this is something that I may um, do in the future as well, do certain signs. And if you like that, comment below and let me know if you like more of the, the feel that I had at, in the night time for you, for your messages. Because it, it definitely felt better for me as well, me being a night person. Um, I work better at nighttime. My energy is more calm and it's more mysterious and I really wanted to do that for Scorpio season so that was really fun to do. Um, so yeah, that was interesting to do that um, and other than that, you know, I really just wanted to freestyle and be intuitive and let whatever energies, because Scorpio is all about purification so I really didn't want to cloud the readings with what, you know, usually I have some type of setting to do right but no it was pretty freestyle this this time around and i really enjoyed the messages there um so i do have a little bit of astrology for you guys in the be for the beginning of the video and then we'll get started with your actual individual tarot readings so we did have a full moon um in taurus on november 3rd a long time ago guys i would have loved i have a taurus moon so i mean yeah i'm definitely going through some completions there but i would have loved to talk to you guys around that time but that was the time when i was really sick interesting that taurus is my third house and taurus rules the throat chakra and i was sick with strep throat so i'm realizing that every month or every year around this time i usually go through some type of throat chakra issue and it was not fun interesting that we had daylight savings time end on that fourth so it's just interesting to me a lot of mysterious uh connections that I'm making around this time that we had a full moon and then the daylight savings time ended we are in the darker half of the year guys and Scorpio is known as the dark night of the soul so if you make it through this season I'm proud of you and congratulations because you're not going to make it through as the same person you were before um, we're all going through certain transformations and that's why these readings are very deep this month um, we have Mercury going into Sagittarius. We have that going on the 5th. Um, I did mention in the Aries video that uh, Mercury was in Libra still, but it isn't. Mercury has entered, or uh, th that Mercury was in Scorpio. It isn't. It's in Sagittarius. And we have Venus in Scorpio, though, so that's cool. Uh, Venus moved into Scorpio on the 7th. And the 10th, we had Lilith move into Capricorn, so that's something that, you know, that we're going to talk about a little bit in the videos with some of you that I that I feel it applies to. We have a beautiful new moon in Scorpio on the 18th. This is when the sun and the moon are both in Scorpio, making the moon invisible in the sky. Please mark your calendars for that day, you guys. Very important day to do emotional releasing work. Um, it's going to be a very dark day. And I don't mean that as in bad. You know, I'm really trying here to spread the messages of light and dark, whereas light is not good and dark is not bad or evil, right? There's beautiful things that come from the dark and really horrible things that come from the light. And, and that's the duality of our universe there. So, you know, this new moon, when the sky is at its darkest, the dark enough to hide the moon, you know, Scorpio does well with energies like that. Not because Scorpio is dark, because Scorpio is the lightest sign, like they are so pure, right? They're all about death and transformation. And and that's just so beautiful. Death and rebirth, some of the things some of the two things that we don't know much about, but how pure is it to be born? How pure is it to die and transform? Just lovely energies and we're all going through this on different levels, right? So interesting day there to have the, the moon and the sun in Scorpio. Wonderful time to do any emotional work or any, you know, meditations, anything like that with spirituality. Beautiful, beautiful time. Um, and then on November 21st, we have the sun entering Sagittarius. So a lot of us are going to really, you know, this is when the transformations kind of let up a little bit right now. Dream on. We're all being transformed and noticing things about ourselves that we didn't even know. And that's what transformation is all about, you know, kind of letting die what, what we're no longer of and rebirthing into what we are. OK, so there are certain parts of us that are dying and that won't make it. And, and we need to encourage that because Scorpio, we, we really have Scorpio to thank for that kind of energy. 
Um, but yes, we will have the sun move into Sagittarius. And on November 22nd, we have Neptune going direct in Pisces. Awesome for me. Awesome for you and where your Neptune placement is. And then, of course, at the end of the month, we have what we call Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to, to those of you who decide to celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, I have a strong Native American uh, history. So, you know, I'm pretty enlightened and I'm pretty woke. So Thanksgiving has always given me the creeps. Um, as a kid, when I was forced in school to color the kind of pilgrim pictures and the Indian pictures and oh they had a feast and it was all great and lovely well my soul is very intelligent and I always had a horrible feeling about Thanksgiving and I'm sure I'm sure some of you have done research and, and some of you are woke and enlightened to the real meaning of Thanksgiving so you know happy Thanksgiving uh, to those of you who are celebrating Thanksgiving at the end of this month interesting that as soon as Neptune Neptune goes direct the same day that the sun moves into Sagittarius and then we have Thanksgiving right after that. So this year for Thanksgiving, yes, I, I will be eating dinner, but it's not a traditional Thanksgiving dinner because I just like to be different and I, I like to set different trends. I'm going to be doing a lot of meditations for the lives that were lost, some of my ancestors that were lost um, in, in the Thanksgiving celebrations or the pilgrim days back then, stuff like that. Um, so I'll be doing meditations there for that and um, I'll just be using that day to be thankful. You know, I will be doing a lot of creative work with thankful and the art of thanks. Um, and I'll be writing out things that I'm thankful for, things that I value. value, And um, I'll, I'm just going to be thankful to be alive, you know what I'm saying? With God willing, I will be alive on that day. And it'll be a very spiritual day for me to kind of reflect on what I am thankful for and and just just so that just just that we're talking now guys I'm extremely thankful for all of you extremely thankful for your likes shares and subscribes and your comments for sure I love talking with you guys I love getting your comments I get I have notifications on my phone so I get a notification every time one of you likes or subscribes and it just puts a smile on my face you know well some of the the, the good comments some of the bad ones are like ye but most of them you know I see that that it's relating to you guys Guys and that my messages were so helpful and I have all the belief in myself I believe in the messages I spread but at the same time you know um, as a tarot reader um, it's hard because I'm talking to a computer you know what I mean I know I'm talking with your guys' energy but I don't necessarily have your feedback right away to say yes I am going through that so it's it's extremely intuitive work which is beautiful around this time and it's even more beautiful that we're heading into a time of belief. And I strongly believe in spirit. I strongly believe in the collective consciousness and that the right messages will receive or, or wind up with the right people. So I'm very thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for the talents, gifts, and abilities that I have in order to do this kind of work. I'm, I'm thankful to be alive and I'm thankful to experience, you know, this chance at, at consciousness. So... You know, whatever you're doing here to wrap up the month of November, I send all my blessings to you guys. And I really hope that the readings this month were um, relatable and helpful to you. Please comment below and let me know what you guys think. And as always, be blessed and you have my best energy sent to you. So, I hope you guys have a wonderful month in November. It is really intense. It is really transforming. But just know, you know, we're coming up on the end of the year. Um, so that's a transformation in itself. There's a lot here to do with cycles. Also, meditation is coming up very strongly for us in November and December. So make sure you're taking the time to do your spiritual work, whether that's just being outside and looking up at the sky and kind of speaking to your higher self or, or being at one with the universe. You know, whether you do meditations or or yoga or whatever it is that you do, it is coming up strong for the signs in November and December. Um, and, and that's pretty awesome because I would say around this time where we're transforming, it's extremely important for us to stay in touch with our higher self because so much is changing right now about people and, and places and things around us and we're changing and other people are changing and, you know, it, it can be kind of hectic, you guys, but just know at the end of all this, we're going to be stronger people and we're going to be transformed into, into things that, into, into the things that we need to be in order for the next step of our life right so these transformations are very very necessary and, and critical to our being in our conscious state our whole entire universe is is transforming right now so i don't want this intro to be very long but those are some words that i really wanted to say to you guys and without further ado 
um, here are your readings for November, and I hope you enjoy. All right. Bye, guys. Talk to you in December. Hi, Taurus. Sun, moon, rising. This is your November tarot reading. Thank you for joining me. If anyone's new, hello. Okay, Taurus. So, one of the main things I wanted to talk to you about in the beginning of your video is that Taurus full moon that we had on November 3rd. I wanted to talk to you guys so sooner than this, but as I mentioned, I was terribly sick with strep throat. Um, I'm kind of, I'm pretty much better. I have like a weird ear thing right now, but something I would notice, okay, Taurus is my third house um, on the wheel. And every time there's a Taurus full moon, I mean yearly, because I have diaries and stuff, and I, you know, that Facebook thing where you can look at what you said on this day. I always come down with strep throat around a Taurus full moon. And I just think I feel like that's so interesting and weird how spirit works. Um, and I have a Taurus moon, so I don't know. It just seems interesting to me that I usually get some type of throat chakra issue um, around Taurus full moon in Scorpio season. There's always a full moon in Taurus in Scorpio season. So it was just interesting, guys. i um, happy I'm better to talk to you now, but unfortunately, it's a little bit farther um, away of the Taurus moon that I wanted. I wanted to talk to you guys like before it. I wanted to talk. What is going on with this earring? <laughs> but um, I'm talking to you guys now. So how was that full moon for you? That was very interesting. I have a Taurus moon so it was interesting for me as well. Um, I feel like it's very important that we pay attention to the moon signs that we have. And so, you know, for instance, if you had like a Leo moon, well, when there's a Leo moon, it's very, very important for you because you kind of always are. So I'm always a Taurus moon. You know, I actually have a new a Taurus zero degree moon. So, you know, I imagine that it wasn't full. It was probably like a little, yeah, it was a crescent moon when I was born. So I loved it, though. It was very intense. Um, I don't have it in my first house, though. You guys do. So you experienced a full moon in your first house of Taurus on the 3rd and 4th. And it was interesting that we had daylight savings time right after that. So um, I'd love to hear, you know, some changes that the full moon could have brought you. This is full clarity. This is full light. Um, and the sun in Scorpio is opposite of you right now. So that's not another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is your seventh house of Scorpio. So as a Taurus, you know, we all have seventh houses. Um, as a Pisces, Virgo is my seventh house and, and my opposite. You know, all of us have opposites. So for you, Taurus, your opposite is Scorpio. And um, that's your seventh house of relationships. So what that means to me is that Taurus energy it, it needs someone who's a little bit emotionally stable because that's what Scorpio means um, and that's your seventh house. So for you guys to be in relationships, you want to be with someone who is kind of mysterious and someone who's creative and emotionally passionate but emotionally stable as well. Scorpio is, a, I would say, an emotionally stable sign. Um, more stable than Pisces when it comes to emotions. Um, but, you know, Scorpio can tend to have their own emotions and, and, I mean, emotional struggles and energies with that. But I feel like Scorpio's uh, Taurus opposition is pretty interesting. And I'm talking to you guys about this because there is so much energy in your seventh house. Now, a m couple months ago in September when the sun was in my seventh house and when um, all these energies, I had Venus in my seventh house. So it was really bringing the attention to partnerships in my life. It was really bringing the attention to relationships I had with people. And this isn't only like love. This is all relationships. So, you know, it can be very intense. And I guess as a Taurus moon, I have a little bit of that going on for me right now. Just not as intense as it would be if it was my Pisces sun. So we have... Okay, Mercury moved into Sagittarius, that's right. Mercury was in Scorpio. So, um, as far as your seventh house, Taurus, we do have Venus there. Venus is in Scorpio, which is the goddess of love. She's all about love, so you're, you have Venus in your seventh house now. And um, that can be pretty intense and passionate. You could be meeting a lot of new people or just, you know, really loving it up with the person you're already with. Some of you may be with Scorpios. 
So yeah, as of November 7th, and it's the 10th now that I'm recording. So a couple days ago, we had Venus enter Scorpio. And we have a new moon in Scorpio. So we're going to have the light and the sun and the moon, the light and the dark in Scorpio. So just keep an eye out for any new beginnings that you may have in relationships. Relationships is very much... It's a very topic for you right now, Taurus, because we have the sun in your seventh house of relationships and partnerships and shared resources, right? Taurus is all about value. Taurus is all about um, the, the finances or the resources that you have as an individual. But when we go over to the eighth house opposite the second house, Taurus, it's about sharing that in, that intimately, sharing what we see as values. Like, I love... I love this nail polish right here. This is like, I value this nail polish so much. And I'm going to do your nails with it. You know what I mean? Like, and for the guys watching, sorry about that example. But it's just something like that. Like, you take what you have. If, if that nail polish was all that I owned, Scorpio energy, I would share it with as a Taurus, you know. And this is something that we all have. We all have a second house of value. We all have an eighth house of shared value, shared resources, intimacy, secrets. So... You know, Taurus, we're going to see how your reading turns out, but as a, you know, as a novice astrologer, this is just something that I'm noticing, and I remember when there was so much 7th house energy for me, um, partnerships and relationships were extremely focused on. So if you are a Taurus out there, um, and you're experiencing a lot with partnerships or with relationships, and this could be relationships with your kids, relationships with your parents, relationships with friends, job relationships, peers anything like that this is being highlighted for you right now it's a very important time right now for you to focus on the people in your life and and what they do for you you know who you value in your life so i think that's it taurus there was that very full moon i wanted to talk to you a little bit about that it was more so just a new beginning for you guys this is when the moon completes itself and starts new so the next new next full moon is going to be in gemini that'll be in december and we'll talk more about that in December but as for November um, we did have mercury in your seventh house there for a little bit before November 5th so that's why I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about that but now it's in Sagittarius so that's more so Gemini's uh, seventh house and like I said we have Venus there so a lot of energies to be working with for you and mark your calendar for the 18th because we have a new moon in Scorpio and New moons are a time for planting new seeds. So for the single Scorpio or for the single Tauruses out there, you might want to be planting new seeds when it comes to intimate relations with other people. Planting new seeds for the relationships you're in or relate new seeds for relationships you would like to be in. Um, very important. Very, 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 very important. So this month, since the Scorpio energy is so potent... Scorpio is more of an intuitive sign. Um, they're able to tap into certain emotions and certain energies more so than any sign when it comes to that kind of mystery and just, I don't know, it's very hidden intimate energy. I have a Scorpio North Node and a Scorpio Midheaven. So I really like to work with these energies in a way where I just kind of channel. So um, what I'm going to try to do, I thought it would be cool to do an eight, eight card reading. So I thought it would be cool to get eight cards from the House of Night, and then I would get, or excuse me, <laughs> four cards from this deck here, the, the House of Night, and then I thought it would be kind of cool to get kind of validating cards for the cards that come out for you. But, you know, things things are different. This is your message, Taurus, so I'm just going to kind of go with what I feel and go with what comes out, and I just kind of wanted to tell you about that because... Um, usually I have some type of plan or structure to my readings, but with these kind of energies, I'm noticing a lot of tarot readers are just kind of going with the flow. That's a good way to put it. Since this is a, a fixed water sign, you just kind of want to add stability a little bit to your intuition. And for me, that means just allowing things to happen the way that they are. So we're going to shuffle here, Taurus, and see what's going on for you in the month of 2017. So we have a lot of 7th house information here for Taurus. So Spirit, what would you like to tell Taurus? What could we talk to Taurus about in the month of November 2017? 
sign of Taurus. Taurus. All right, so we have Fragment coming up again, Taurus. Goodness gracious. I remember this card coming up a lot last month. Ooh, we had Obedience come out a little bit, but it flipped back over. So there could be something there about Obedience, but it'll come back out if it's meant to. Let's really focus our intuitions here. Let's bring our energies together. I'd, I'd like to contact my Taurus moon during this reading as well, my Taurus intuition to help aid with this energy okay so we had three cards pop out so i guess this is your reading taurus and at the at the bottom we have movement so you know there's underlying energy of movement here and we'll get back to that and what that could mean here so taurus we have the four cards here from the house of night and we have that first card here about fragments now, this fragment card, we talked a little bit about it last month. Sorry about this glare that keeps happening in, on the top of my computer. But, yes, we talked about this last month, Taurus. Um, this is about being in pieces. When you're fragmented, when things are in fragments, you are a little bit here, a little bit there. So, Taurus, you know, with that full moon and all these energies here in Scorpio, you could feel a little bit fragmented. This could have a little bit to do with your relationships for some of you. Your relationships can be a little feeling a little fragmented, like, mm, I feel something weird. I feel like only a little bit of you is here and some of you wasn't, you know, maybe I'm a little bit here and some of me isn't. Um, Spirit talks about us always being complete, though. Even though we feel in pieces or we may feel kind of fragmented, just know that in spirit you are always whole. And you're always together. You're always in a in completion with spirit. Now, I am led to this one five up here. So that's six. So for some of you Tauruses, you could be feeling a little fragmented within your sixth house of lifestyle. So, you know, I'm not sure how a lot of you Tauruses are doing in the home situation or how you're doing where you live or maybe you want to move or there's just some things you, you want to kind of change around because i'm not really feeling that your home environment is horrible it's just that there's a few things that are really bothering you lately that you know you're feeling fragmented and you know as a taurus um even my moon is like this a little bit like when it comes to my environment um it's very important that it's feeling up to par for me um that it's very peaceful and clean and that I know where everything is my home I have a Taurus fourth house as well so you know it's very important for my home not to feel in pieces so this there's something here about the lifestyle and lifestyle doesn't necessarily have to mean home but that was just coming out for some of you lifestyle has to do with your job and how you're of service to the world so there may be something here about your place of work Taurus feeling fragmented and we're going to get a little bit more information about this, but I'm seeing right away that there's something here about the different pieces, right? And it has the six up there. And then we have a, the four card coming out, and this is the High Priestess of Water. So, you know, this is Scorpio season, and it's very water element. This is the High Priestess. So this is about intuition, Taurus. This is about your emotions. This is about your feelings. So this could very much be talking about the Taurus full moon that we had on the 4th. Did you see that number 4 up there? So the moon is a very watery energy and it has a lot to do with feelings and emotions and completions. So at the beginning of November, I see that you Taurus could have been feeling a little bit more emotional than they'd like to be. You are a fixed earth sign and we're in a fixed water sign. So for you Taurus, especially being the opposite of Scorpio, there's an extreme need for you to balance your emotions right now. I mean, that's true for all of us. That's true for all of us. Scorpio is really um, trying to show us this kind of different energy here. Um, this High Priestess is very beautiful. And, you know, she has a great deal of emotions inside her. But the way she goes about explaining it, or the way that she goes about expressing it, is just, it's not really in a sym sympathetic way or an over-emotional way. She just, and this, I'm feeling that this is your energy that I'm picking up on, Taurus, as I'm looking at this card here. Because you may be explaining things, like, you handle emotions interestingly, Taurus. 
I wouldn't say that you guys are over emotional people, but you definitely feel a great deal. Okay, you are the house of values, so I feel that you value anything that is personal to you. So in a way, you know that is your emotion. So how do you feel about emotions, Taurus? When you start feeling sad, or if you start, and emotions could be anything, but I'm seeing this as more so the heavy. You know, this has to do with fragments. So this could be your emotions in fragments. And if that is true for you, Taurus, or any Tauruses out there, you really want to gather yourself because there's pieces that are everywhere. Yes, you're feeling emotionally kind of not all over the place, but just like, you know, maybe there's certain situations where some of you has to be here and some of you has to be here. So there's kind of like an emotional multitasking. Maybe you're feeling a lot of different things at once, you know, but, you know, you want to use your intuition and you really want to apply your intuition and the intuition it ha is an emotional thing so you want to listen to your intuition especially in the beginning of november hopefully you already have since i'm talking to you so late and this is coming up so you want to do this for the rest of november especially the rest of uh scorpio season so there's lots and lots of psychic intuition lots of feelings so there's emotional situations like this is surrounded by complete emotion and, you know, that could make a, a Taurus feel a little bit scattered. So there's something here, and, and this is the four. So four has a lot to do with emotional stability. This is the house of cancer. Cancer is emotional comfort, emotional um, foundation. This is a lot to do with foundation. So this your emotional foundation is coming up here. And if you are a Taurus who is feeling a little bit scattered or all over the place with your emotional foundation, you want to look into that. You really want to heed that and you really want to, you know, you're great at fixing things, Taurus. You are logical. You're an earth sign. You're very physical. You place value into things. So if you would just apply some value to the way that you feel, I believe that these pieces could teach you things. All these different feelings you have about stuff. It's here to teach you about things. So there's something here with emotional fragments. Um, the High Priestess of Water is coming to you to kind of help you with the different areas that you feel in pieces. And I see lots of Earth in this picture. So, you know, this is you, Taurus. This is your earthiness. And this water, this Scorpio water has really shaken you up. And you're kind of like, see, uh, like, I'm just going to kind of go ghost a little bit and fly up. And I'm going to, like, retreat to my Earth. So a lot of earth signs could be kind of dealing with that. And that might be why movement is at the bottom of your deck. Because you really want to ground yourself. This is a grounded energy. This is movement. This is so earth. So there's something here with that. But we're going to come back and get more clarifiers on that. Because there could be so many different things with that, Taurus. So your third card from the night is the 13th card of Summon. And this energy talks about summoning things on your own. This is also a number four. So we have this emotional summoning here. So some of you might need to summon your emotional stability. Some of you might need to summon a certain... And what does it mean to summon? It means to manifest. It means to... You know, you're a very powerful sign, Taurus. And this lady here, she's very magical. And I want you to know that during these energies, and actually always, you're very, very magical and powerful. So you have the power to summon these kind of things, to summon this magic. And I'm led to this kind of earth on her face. She has this kind of earth here. So this is telling me that this is very you. And you're going to use your intuition, okay? These people both have moons on their head. So she's going to, you're going to use her, your intuition. You start off in pieces at the beginning of the month. But, you're, you know, emotions are ironically going to help you through that. This high priestess of water with this moon on her head. And then you're going to have the ability to emotionally summon things. This is the four. You know, it may have something to do with 13. You may want to keep in mind um, on the 13th anything that goes on because it's the 10th now. So in a few days, you may have the, a strong ability to kind of summon something into your life. Whether it be your emotional stability, whether it be a house, this is anything. And you know, Taurus, you do know all about value. So anything that you value that you'd like to summon, you had that full moon. So it's all about using that kind of power now. We're in a great time of emotion, but she's very focused on the magic. She's very focused on bringing things from other worlds here to her. So there's an emotional summoning that I see happening here because both of these cards are number four. 
So there's something here with kind of summoning that high priestess of water. And for you, I believe that, that you are that high priestess of water. That you're going to kind of transform into your opposite sign. Um, well, your opposite element, water. And you may be able to summon certain things. And, and I'm seeing here, this last card we have here for you is choices. So there's some choices here for you, Taurus, in the month of November. And I'm seeing the moon here again. So it's kind of like taking flight with your emotions. There's something here with flying and um, take, letting your intuition take flight, right? And this man, he's got these big white and black wings. So this is a certain choice that you might have to make. And this is opposite choices. Like that's why his wings are black and white because it's like there's no gray area. I know this is gray and all you can see is gray right now. But it's interesting that, that I'm hearing spirits saying there's no gray area, Taurus. You have to choose one or the other. This card talks a lot about, you know, um, not being able to have best of both worlds sometimes, you know. But this is a very strong character. He's got these big old abs and he's very strong. So he's, he reminds me of a grounded earth sign. So, you know, being grounded in the different choices that you have to make. This is about honoring both ends of the spectrum so hmm for example like if i want to move hmm okay so if i go this way it's cool because it's closer to my job but it's farther away from the kids school so you gotta it's like taking the have and the have nots together but there's a certain choice here and this is this is choices that will impact your future so anything that you have to decide between taurus this month just know that you really want to pay attention to what that could mean for you you really want to pay attention to how that's going to change your life because, you know, you're going to want to take flight after this. And I know that you're kind of torn right now. It seems very torn, you know, but these are hard choices. This isn't choices between chicken and pizza, you know, like food and like, ooh, uh, either way, I'm happy. This is like, oh my God, if I choose this, I don't ever get this again. Or if I choose this, I don't get this. So there's a certain need to decide here. You're going to have to decide certain things. And I see that this is 6 and 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10. So this might have something to do with your career or your legacy. Because the 10th house is Capricorn. Very earthy energy. So, you know, for some of you Tauruses, this may have a choice between jobs. This may be, um, and it's a strong decision. You're going to have to go towards one end of the spectrum very strong. And um, I'm seeing this bird up here by this moon, right? So this might be a choice that takes place around the new moon, which is the 18th, remember? And I remember I told you that the light and the dark is going to be joined. So the sun and the moon, and I see the sun and the moon as ultimate light and dark. So it's interesting that spirit is showing me this card for you because you may take flight with a certain choice or decision on the 18th around that Scorpio moon. You may be choosing between two different people since this is seventh house energy for you. Um, but I see that these are choices. This could be even subconscious choices with the moon here and the bird and there's a lot of flying. So this may be choices you're making inside in your mind or in a different realm. You know, it might not be physical choices that you're used to like, oh, this job or that job or this car or this car. This could be emotional. I think this is emotional decisions. There's something here with you wanting to take flight and it's not the usual that you're used to dealing with Taurus. Th these are energies that are very emotional. And you may even, you have the power here to summon. So you're summoning something and maybe you need to make a choice about what you want to summon. You know, there's something here, but I'm seeing a lot of power and I'm not feeling the, the normal Taurus energy that I would usually feel from you guys. I'm feeling a lot and I mean, it's Scorpio season. That's why everybody is transforming right now, right? Everybody is kind of transitioning and changing. So there's obviously going to be some choices here for you. I'm going to get some clarifiers here with regular tarot. Yay. And, oh, sorry. Immediately, I'm seeing the Queen of Cups and the Six of Cups. So there's certain soulmate decisions here. A lot of completions on the table for you. Um, and there's a need to balance I'm seeing here. So it's interesting, Taurus, the energies that are coming up for you. I'm just going to shuffle the cards here. And I see you at the bottom of the deck now. So Spirit is telling me your cards are ready. And before we start, I'm just going to listen a little bit more to see if there's anything else that comes up for you guys. Definitely seeing earth and water. There's an extreme. Um, maybe that you're in pieces because of earth and water, which is 
real things and things that you feel. There's a need for some of you Tauruses to really align what you feel about the real things in your life. What's real, what you feel, what you feel, what's real. And I see you escaping a little bit from, from the earth element. So you may be escaping from that's not Taurus-like. So if you're feeling a bit confused or if you're feeling a little bit more in, in your emotions than what you're usually aware of, if you're feeling in fragments, it's because you've kind of emotionally left a situation or you're not fully there, Taurus. There's something with that that you're not fully here emotionally. And there's a situation that's really calling you. This is speaking to me as my Taurus moon as well. Something there about not fully being there intuitively, or you're not fully there spiritually. You're not fully there emotionally. So there are certain situations that are going to cause you to ground. You know, this lady isn't exactly grounded. And I'm thinking that this isn't your guys' fault. This is more so what happened as the sun entered Scorpio last month. You know, this is your opposite sign. So it's going to call you to the forefront. And we all handle these things differently, but I'm seeing a little bit of emotional escapism here. And I trust you, Taurus. So there might this these might be things that you needed to kind of emotionally escape from, but you want to be careful of that around Scorpio season, especially because Scorpio season is your opposite sign. We have the King of Wands coming out here. So there may be something to do with fire. This this uh sun is gonna enter Sagittarius on the twenty third, or I mean the twenty first, twenty second. So there is some passion coming up here for you. Some of you may be with fire signs, Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. So, all right, let's see what Fragments is here for you guys. Just so, um, what this is going to do is allow me to take a further look into the card and what it meant for you. This was just my intuition at first. These could mean, and I want you to heed your own intuition as well. This is your reading, and I don't know you as well as you know yourself, right? So let's see Fragments, Spirit. This is for Taurus. And we have the fragment card here from the Wisdom of House of Night. And we have a card that flipped over and hid. So there's a lot here with hidden energies. And now I have to find it. Okay, so you're in fragments about a certain situation that feels very negative to you. This is a negative situation. And it, it is usually something that has already happened. This is the five, right? This is the five of cups. So it's interesting here that this man, he's covered in all black. He's very dark. So there's obviously some darker energies that are coming up for him. Um, and there's some, they're emotional. Okay, so there is something here about you being emotionally f uh, fragmented. Obviously, you're in emotional pieces, right? These cups have knocked over. But the problem with that, Taurus, is that there's two full cups behind you still. And you really want to you wanna deem certain things this month as water under the bridge. You see that water under the bridge back there? Rivers always flow. The river is still flowing. And this, in this case, is symbolic for your emotions. So you don't have to cover yourself in this dark cloak and, and kind of escape from the situation. And you definitely don't want to be escaping to a place of depression, right? Because I'm... I'm the cards speak to me in different ways in different readings and in this specific reading i'm seeing you kind of escape the six the five plus one you know that is a, a the, the lifestyle and that's virgo virgo is very grounded you know what i mean so i'm seeing a lack of grounding here that's not okay for you taurus i know that you like to be grounded and the reason why some of you have not felt grounded and the reason why some of you are feeling in pieces is because you feel a lot like this five of cups guy there are certain emotional situations from the past that some of you may have not gotten over. Um, someone could have emotionally stolen from you. These cups could have been knocked over because of someone else, and now no, there's nowhere. I'm seeing nobody in this card with you. So when it comes to this specific feeling, Taurus, there's nobody, there's nobody with you during this feeling. You know, you're standing alone, and perhaps if you weren't alone, someone could remind you. And that's going to be Pisces Priestess right now for you. In your situation, you know, you're feeling fragmented, like everything's over or like a little bit of you is here. So a little bit of you is still in, stuck in, in the situation where you were feeling like this, where you were feeling, you know, knocked over emotionally. This is like emotionally unfulfilled. There's something here with three cups. So this could have been an emotionally three-party situation so it could be you and your kids and your spouse or you and your spouse and someone that you like like a third party so one of your you like somebody else but you're married or something like that but the real thing here about this card 
is that the two cups behind you, you have more to offer Taurus and you're not completely emotionally spent. Even though, you know, you're giving more and more emotion to the situation, but just go ahead and, and harness that Taurus energy. Any Taurus I know would pick these cups up and clean them. <laughs> you guys would go wash them in the sink because you love doing dishes. And, you know, I don't know about the men out there, but every Taurus I know are the best home keepers. Like I said, you know, the home of a Taurus, you know, and this is about your emotional home. So you really want to pick up your emotional dishes and clean them out, put them in the cupboard, and don't allow anyone to drink from them again. And these two cups you want to be very, very careful with. And don't turn your back on the, the emotion that you have left. You don't want to be spending that or spilling that with people who aren't going to respect you emotionally, right? Taurus doesn't deal with emotion. I know you guys feel a lot. But your day-to-day -day life, you know, you're not out here making extreme emotional decisions. You know, that's not realistic. You know, you guys know the value in things. And to be honest, I can be honest, as a Pisces, my emotions get in the way of me sometimes. But thank God I have my Taurus moon to kind of ground me. And that is the area of my emotions. So it's interesting here that Taurus is dealing with a lot of emotional issues this month in November, perhaps a little bit even October. This could be shit from like last month too. But I'm here to say, I see you as spirit. You're you're kind of, there's some Tauruses here that can probably see themselves. And this is up to you guys. So if you can see yourself in this man, if you feel a little, and this could be in your mind, Taurus, nobody is going to see you like this in real life, right? Because you're too grounded. You're too stable. You are a fixed earth sign. So even this Scorpio energy isn't going to make you visibly look this way, but do you feel this way, Taurus? All right, so we really want to talk about the way that you feel in this reading, not the way that you seem. Because if there's anything I know about Taurus is that you guys can seem very stable and grounded when inside you're just like really sad, right? And it's okay to be sad about these cups. You know, there's even blood spilling from these cups, right? There's kind of like red and water. So this is blood, sweat, and tears that went unnoticed you know they're knocked down and this is an energy of really being sad about what didn't work out this is being sad about what's negative and what's heartbreaking but you want to be careful because if you make the wrong step if these if this energy this is over with they're not going to magically fill again unless you fill them yourself right i don't know if you're waiting for another person to kind of return your emotions to you but they are yours anyway this is why you're feeling emotionally fragmented and, you know, I'm not sure if this is what you're going through, Taurus, but something that Scorpio season has kind of allowed me to realize is that a lot of people in my life have stolen from me emotionally. That could be very well my Taurus moon as to why I'm dealing with that. Um, because I had to, you know, do a lot of meditations. I had to do a lot of focused intent on my own emotions and kind of take that back. You know what I mean? We all have power over our emotions. And I just discovered this like hole inside of me and it was because of my ex it was because of people that are no longer in my life people who have even died that I can't talk to and so I'm realizing that people you know it's kind of a depressing thing when you have emotions to express to a person that are no longer around something like that so your situation could be a little different than mine but there may be people that you have things to say to or you have emotions to express to them you're emotionally fragmented right so there could be people that you might not even know it as an earth sign but they have your emotions inside them and they're using them to make themselves feel better so take your emotion back you know you want to pick up your emotional losses cut your losses Taurus like yeah you lost three cups but you have two more so so what I know all you Tauruses that's plenty for you because you can make something out of nothing like you're very logical so let's see why this high priestess is here for you okay we had a few cards pop out but I don't think this is for you but we did have we have the hanged man and the page of Pentacles. so there's something here about waiting for value waiting for something tangible waiting for money there is a third party situation here with this cups energy, these three cups. And I see an Aquarius here, third party Aquarius, something with a burden. So there's something there with that, Taurus, but let's focus a little bit more. And I see the Nine of Swords. Some of you may be even losing sleep over a situation. Um, very, very mentally like anxiety, depression. This is for some of you. So let's see what this water energy is doing for Taurus this month. 
We have a lot of priestesses showing up here. Aries got the high priestess of air. And Taurus, you are now getting the high priestess of water. Whoa. Whoa, wow. That definitely just flew out. And let's see here. We have the seven of wands. So there's some emotional battles going on here. And I say that because at the bottom of this card, um, this is land. This is land. This is land. But right here is water. And you can't see because I decided to do my videos in black and white this month. But he is avoiding emotion. And it's because he has a, he's too busy fighting and he's too busy grounding. So for your reading, Taurus, you know, this is a lot about staying on your feet and staying grounded. And I actually see that for some of you, it's okay to avoid your emotions right now. Because if this man were to give into his emotions, one of these people down below would surely knock him off his throne and off his feet. And that's what this Seven of Wands is about. It's about you being in a high position and having, you know, aggressive people. And these, this is a fire energy too, you know. And I'm not sure if you're fighting with a fire sign. But this is definitely, you know, wands are fire. And if it's not a fire sign who you're fighting with, because I think all you Tauruses are dealing with these energies in different places, work, you're dealing with them at home, you're dealing with them in your relationship or friends, parents, kids. But, you know, that's why you're feeling emotional. This card is validating the High Priestess of Water. And I have your cards right down here. So we're over here and we have some here. So this is the High Priestess of Water being validated by this kind of Seven of Wands, right? So the reason why you're feeling emotionally all over the place is because there's a lot of people that you can feel intuitively that don't like you. And Taurus is very good at knowing who feels this way towards them. Like they might smile in your face, but really they would love to see you like this, right? Taurus initiates a lot of jealousy from people. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the moon and we have the cancer card. Okay, so this is a lot of emotions coming up. And then there's the lover's card here. These cards came up for Aries too, so you might want to check that video out. There's some kind of relations here. So yeah, definitely Pisces, Cancer, and Gemini coming up for you. And it has a lot to do with love. A lot of these cards came out for Aries. This Four of Wands. So there's something here with resting and rejuvenation with your emotion. And this is a Taurus card here. So you're feeling very filled with love. Remember how I was saying a lot of this has to do with your seventh house of relationships. So some of you, very short few of you, could be interested in a Gemini or just interested in an air sign. Or some of you may have your eye on a water sign. Cancer, Pisces, or just someone who's very in tune with their emotions. Could be a Scorpio as well. So that's interesting. We definitely have a lot of you being single as well. So, okay, let's see here. I want to get one more on that High Priestess of Water. Because there's a lot of fighting, I see that. The Seven of Wands. But what else can you tell me? Like, what is this fighting? What is this fighting with Taurus? Like, why are they on this mountain? Why are they avoiding their emotions? What are all these fighters? Who is fighting them? Like, what is all this negative? I just feel a lot of energy from this Taurus. Like, you're just so on your feet. You're trying to be grounded, but it's not fair because the, the universe wants you to pay attention to your emotions. But how can you when, when you're not in an emotional situation? Like, everything is making you be grounded right now. So you're not really wanting to... Okay, lots of pain here. There's, like, two very large decks that showed up. So I'm seeing the Ten of Swords and the Ace of Cups. So, I mean, there's lots of emotion here and lots of pain. But we're going to, and this is for some of you. Some of you may not be going, and I hope not, because this is a rather heavy um, reading. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything else when the sun and all this energy is in Scorpio. Because I'm telling you, when it's Virgo season, and that's my opposite sign, I just feel so heavy. The sun is the farthest away from you, Taurus. The sun is the farthest away from you that it's going to ever get. All right, now we have the Nine of Wands coming out. So, very guarded, Taurus. And it's so interesting, these two cards came out for Aries as well. So, you may really want to check out that reading if you have Aries energy, because they're getting a lot of the same energies as you, but very different as well. So, the Nine of Wands is talking about being very injured. This is very, th these cards I think of in my head all the time together. And they just so happen to be coming out together right now. 
So the Nine of Wands talks about a lot of battles. All the all the wands back there are are very fiery battles that you've been through. And they're kind of creating this jail around you of protection. You're kind of protecting yourself because you feel the energy that's coming. We are in Scorpio season. This is a darker energy. Taurus is very psychic. You're the opposite of Scorpio. So it could be very well that these energies are coming after you first because you're, you're Scorpio's opposite. And the sun is in Scorpio. So it's like leaving you in this kind of shadowy dark area like it does me when the sun's in Virgo. And I'm seeing here that a lot of you are hurt. And this may not be physical, but I'm seeing this as a very physical thing. This is a very physical man. But you know what? Something about him is that he's ready to fight again. He is limping. He has an injured head, right? He's very injured and very tired. But his eyes are shifting still because he's like waiting for this fight. There's one. This talks about having one more fight. And then you have the Ten of Wands, right? This is the Nine of Wands. And Nine is one away from Ten. And Ten is a completion. So this is talking about your fights almost being completed, right? Like the your fight, the battle is almost done. The battle is almost completed. And this is an emotional battle. So let's let's take it a little bit a little bit softer kind of, but maybe not for an earth sign. Because validating that high priestess of water is these two very fiery energies, right? And I'm not necessarily seeing this as a fire sign. I'm just seeing this as well, they're fights that you're passionate about, and both of them are taking a lot of energy from you. Um, I'm seeing a lot of earth, like you just want to be grounded. You just want a peace, and you just want to be grounded, but there's all these energies in your life right now. And this is probably taking a toll on your emotions, Taurus, because you're trying to stay on your feet, and you're trying to stay balanced, and you're trying to avoid your emotions because of that, because as an earth sign, your emotions could damage you. But I'm seeing that you are emotionally damaged. And this could be something that's coming up for you because of all the pain that you have endured. Like the thing about Scorpio season is it takes pain from the basement and pain from the attic and brings it right to your living room. So, because the living room is where we're always at, right? Where we bring people at, where we chill at the most. Well, we hide things in our basement, our emotional basements and our emotional attics so that people who come to visit can't see it directly on us. But Scorpio, will it brings out darkness that we've hidden for a very long time. And it's good that this happens because when Sagittarius season comes along in a couple of weeks, we will have dealt with so many emotions that we just, the year is almost over. You know, there's certain things that we need to battle right now and fight so that it doesn't follow us into the new completions of our life. You know, like, so there is a completion that you're working towards, Taurus, and it's an emotional completion. And you're doing a lot of fighting because of that. You might be fighting emotionally with a person. Could be emotional arguments. This is watery. Could, you could be fighting your own intuition. I feel like it means lots of different things for each of you. But these two cards came out validating the High Priestess of Water. So this could also be why you're in Fragments. Because there's a lot of battles you're facing right now. And with Taurus, you know, it doesn't have to be emotional battles. This could just be battles that are causing you to feel emotional. But I'm seeing this as like work battles or battles with yourself, battles with other people. Or you could just feel the energy of battles right now. This could be fighting with your the seventh house relationship. So if you're having a lot of fights right now with your partner, just know it's because the universe is putting so much emphasis in and it's just putting so much attention on your seventh house of the people around you. And I'm seeing you again here alone, right? I'm seeing so many things. The only time you're not alone yet is right here, but you still are not able to see the faces of the people who are hurting you. So there's something here about hidden enemies, right? I hate this card because when I first looked at this card, when I first got this deck, I didn't even know that these were... They're, people are poking up, you know, like they're poking up at him and he's fighting back, but you can't see any of them. So there's something here about hidden enemies that will be revealed to you, Taurus. Maybe you're so busy fighting that you're not really able to look at the enemy, the face of your enemies. And, you know, Taurus, I'm seeing that some of you, when you find out who these wands are being held by, it could be by people you really never expected, people you loved and cared about. But nevertheless... You are ready to fight that battle, right? And I'm seeing you here again alone. You know, you're alone here 
and you're in fragments. Like part of you is in here fighting. Part of you is here sad about these emotions. So no wonder you're all over the place emotionally. Because this Scorpio season is really bringing the attention to all the different things that Taurus feels. When usually you can go through the first half of the year not really caring or, or having to deal with that. But Scorpio season brings it all out for you. So um, that priestess is very much validated by this rough energy. Okay, so your emotions, I'm seeing that they're, they're a little bit rough. But, you know, you're still on guard, Taurus. Bottom of the deck, we have the Six of Pentacles and the Six of Cups. So, you know, you're going to need to balance out things from your past and your future. This is about, that's exactly what this means is, is you know, valuing your past, valuing your future, valuing the younger side of you, valuing your, the mature side of you, valuing your soulmate. This is a soulmate could be coming back from the past. That could be why you're feeling kind of emotionally all over because there is this kind of offer coming in, this Knight of Cups. And I see this Queen of Swords, I mean, this King of Pentacles, geez, this something with the Queen of Swords could be an air sign for some of you, but this is the King of Pentacles showing up after this Knight of Cups. So this could be an earth sign coming in to show you love. And you know, you know, you may be with water signs right now, but you might miss that kind of earthy feeling because there is so much new love coming in. And it's so interesting that I said Queen of Swords earlier because this is coming up. So there's this Ace of Cups, which is emotional fulfillment and um, new love. I've heard this be said new love. And this is the Ace, you know what I mean? So this is a lot of emotion coming in. But you have this kind of Queen of Swords who isn't emotional. So there's something here about fighting your emotions, Taurus. But there's so much coming up for you. This balancing, right? This person coming back from the past that could very much be... Um, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn and that might make you confused I told you there was there was something there with your seventh house because you have these choices to make so some of you could be choosing between a water or earth sign so you could be choosing between a Scorpio a Pisces or a Cancer between a Virgo Taurus or Capricorn but I'm seeing here a very strong need to balance the give and take in the relationships you're in or going to be in or were in so this is why you're kind of feeling like this, because you're not balancing your emotions, right? And that's all this is about, Taurus, is, is balancing your emotions. And I've seen that Queen of Swords back there, which came right after the Ace of Wands or Ace of Cups. So we have all this emotion here in a person who would just rather be intellectual and grounded. So, you know, that's something there as well. But I would like to move on to the Summon card why is summon here for taurus what is it that they should summon why is summon here is there anything more you would like to say to clarify that okay so we have the six of swords six 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 like we are literally had the six of cups the six of um pinnacles and now we have the six of swords so it seems as if you will be making a decision and you definitely have the passion of a new beginning coming some of you tauruses are really making you know, and, and it's so interesting that I see this because I was just going to talk about the choices card and then I seen the two of swords beneath the ace of wands. So there is such an, a passionate beginning happening for you in November and it's going to cause you to make a choice to either stay or leave. And this could be leaving mentally, right? But there's, this is you right here. It's so interesting. I'm hearing so many things and so many symbols here about Taurus really not liking all the emotion around them. Maybe if you yourself aren't feeling emotionally fragmented, then they're, you're around people who feel that way and you just really don't know what to tell them. But this is about leaving like choppy waters. You see how he's kind of leaving? And then the waters out there are pretty still. And in this card, we see three people. Um, I like to think of this as a feminine not because she's sad, but I feel that energy from her. She is more so sad about leaving. And then we have this child here that's just a part of this journey. And then we have this masculine energy that's just rowing and going, rowing and going. And he knows that he's sad, but he knows that somebody's got to take initiative to get them the hell out of this situation. They just came from a really, really tough situation. It's like they just, they got ambushed and they were, they were able to find a boat and leave and it's almost more realistic than that because i see that this is a sword card so this is about 
communication and intellect and it's about making the decision to leave this is a mental decision to kind of leave and it hurt because they stuck these swords in the boat which could cause it to potentially um sink so it was very scary to leave for these people and i'm seeing in november that it's going to be very scary for some of you to leave a situation but ultimately you know that it's better for you as an earth sign so by the end of scorpio season when we enter this kind of fire season you're going to have a passionate new beginning i'm seeing november 21st is when this passion is going to kind of come in you're finally going to be able to breathe and come up from these waters and this is your earth self i don't know who you are on this card taurus but you could very well be this masculine earth sign this doesn't have to be men doesn't have to be women it's just it's it's whoever is applying it to themselves somebody in the situation this could be people leaving you i guess you could be leaving other people and it's not just people it could be a situation like i am done with this job this job is just really taking a toll on my emotions so i'm leaving this bad job that doesn't give me a steady schedule and i'm going to work at a, a job that pays me more and it has a schedule but whatever it is taurus so many different things and i love detail i love getting thorough but i just feel that there's just so many of you that watch my videos and what I can just say as a general statement is that there's a tougher situation you're leaving behind mentally. You're going to make the mental decision to leave. It's going to be painful. This talks about leaving and regret, right? You can't see the, any of their faces, but I'm sure most of them are crying because they don't like that they had to leave, but they know their future is better. So there's certain decisions you're going to make this month about getting your taking, doing what it takes, and you're going to make a short sacrifice for a very strong future, right? You're going to make a little bit of a sacrifice for something that you're going to get way more in return because you can't keep losing. You don't want to stay in this place of emotion. So this is coming up to, to, to um, clarify summon. So you may want to summon the strength that it's going to take for you to leave, right? You may want to summon this kind of character. You might want to summon whatever it takes for you to get out of a certain situation. And I don't know what this is, Taurus, job, family member. It could be a relationship. I'm not sure. But you're being asked to summon what it takes to get you across this lake of emotion. And I'm seeing this here as Scorpio season. Like, there, these people are literally um, in the water. And they're on this boat with swords sticking out of them. So it's dangerous, you know, like... They could sink, but they're not going to sink because somebody's strong enough to keep rowing them. And they're leaving a, d a difficult situation to get to somewhere peaceful. So whatever's difficult, whatever's making you feel fragmented and, and choppy with your emotions, you see how in the distance they're getting ready to make it to land? Well, that's you getting back to your logical Taurus self. You are those trees in the distance. And you just need to kind of summon the kind of strength to get you past all the Scorpio water. And I'm going to get another card on that summoning. And remember at the bottom of the deck, we had this passionate decision that you have to make, right? Because there's definitely way more than you're aware of. You know, this kind of cloud coming out. We have Virgo showing up. We have Libra. So this is angels. Libra is the archangel and Virgo is the hermit. If you don't have a Virgo or a Libra in your life, then you are isolating yourself in a way to find balance. And we have an emotional character showing up. So there's going to be some truth here that you talk to about a Scorpio Cancer Pisces. You are, this is truth right here coming out. And that's all Scorpio season. Scorpio brings out emotional truth. So this is your emotional truth. If you're not communicating emotionally and truthfully with a water sign, then you're just being masculine and your emotions are balanced. You're being emotionally true to yourself. Maybe that's what it takes, you know, with this, if you're feeling fragmented in order to get out of this situation, in order to quit all this fighting, then you're going to have to, you know, there's emotional truth coming up here for you, Taurus. And I know you're not usually that emotional of a person, but we all have different seasons, right? Like when Sagittarius season comes up, then a lot of attention is going to be put on, you know, kind of like my passion. And Sag is my um, planetary ruler. So, you know, I'm saying that all these zodiac signs, we go through them differently. And you're a Taurus, and this is Scorpio season. So it, it's called, maybe every Scorpio season is like this for you. You really want to pay attention to that. But I know right now, in 2017, there's some emotional truth that needs to come out. 
And we have this Six of Pentacles and Six of Cups coming up again. And I've shuffled. You saw me shuffle the cards. And this is coming up again. So there's still some balance here. There's something about balancing your past and future. Something about someone coming back. And there's the give and the take. There's something here about valuing. Your, you're the pinnacle. And this is earth and water. So it's like valuing your emotions. And then here's this earth sign coming in, trying to give you love, Taurus. Like this earth sign really wants to love you or wants to offer you emotions. And, you know, I'm seeing that all earth signs are kind of learning way more about their emotions. You know, a lot of people say that earth signs aren't emotional. Oh, and you have a, you're charging towards this emotion too. Taurus, after this video, I hope that you are able to look at emotions differently if you're one of the Tauruses. Some, some Tauruses, you know, we all have different charts. So you could be a Taurus with a Pisces moon and, you know, you are used to these kind of emotions. But Taurus in general, you know, the, you're the opposite of Scorpio, just like Virgo is the opposite of Pisces and Cancer is the opposite of Capricorn. So all of you earth signs are opposite of very emotional water signs. So it kind of takes away, it's not fair, but it takes away from the emotion that you do feel. But I see that you're charging towards it with little to no concern about what it's going to cost you because you know that you're you're after this new beginning right so there's an emotional new beginning here for you taurus i see this moon card so there could be a beginning here with a pisces or a new beginning here of with a water sign or a new beginning here of your emotions and this could be happening because of the taurus full moon on the fourth or it could be happening about because of the full moon at the beginning of december but i'm seeing here that it's going to cause you a lot of love we do have the devil card here, so if it's not talking about attachments, then it is talking about a Capricorn, and I felt that strongly with that King of Pentacles here. So some of you have a, a Capricorn really wanting to um, meet with you, but first, we have this emotional truth, because some of you may be with people already, and you know, you might want to spend some time alone. You might want to spend some time alone. If this isn't a Virgo or a Libra for you... So that might have had something to do with all that summoning. And then we have this coming out for you. So you want to summon emotional fulfillment. Just because you're an earth sign, I want you to know that it's still very important that you experience emotional happiness. And, you know, for, for earth signs, it may take different things to make you emotionally happy. But whatever it takes for you, Taurus, to get these this completion of emotions and for you to be happy with your kids and your, your spouse, you know, you really want to communicate that truth. And I do see that there's some fighting going on here in the home environment, right? And that's why you're feeling kind of like this king, queen of cups. So you want to summon your emotions so that you are able to obtain this ten of cups and move away. Like all of these right here are very rough fighting cards right this is a people going in all different directions and kind of but this talks about this talks about conflict being kind of a good thing so you know since you already have conflict in your emotions some like right here by this high priestess spirit is actually telling you to summon more kind of conflict and this is coming up with summon so when you leave yeah it's gonna create a lot of chaos people are gonna be like why did you do that Taurus why did you move why did you leave why did you leave that job like your boss is gonna be like what the hell you're gonna do this your boss is gonna be like oh my god what the hell like la 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 this talks about leaving and a lot of people feel in a lot of different ways about that but you know what it doesn't matter it matters how you feel which is going to be very emotionally fulfilled. That is what this season is teaching you, uh, Cancer. I mean, Taurus, Jesus. So there may be something there with a Cancer or a Scorpio. I'm feeling water for you very heavily. It's interesting as I say that because I see the Two of Cups and the Page of Cups. And there's something here with the, with the Earth sign, a very slow-moving Earth sign coming in in Sagittarius season. You're going to be called to judgment. The truth is going to come out, Taurus. And your card, and this is amazing to have at the bottom of that, the high priestess, and like the high priestess is someone who is, a, is very psychically and intuitively aware. And she's very much um, paired with the Hierophant. So for you to have these two cards is badass. Like this is you really, and you have to get in touch with your emotions first. This is your card, the Hierophant. This is tradition. So there's something here about traditional intuition. And I had this page of cups pop out just so I can show you. I had this page of cups pop out with this um, two of cups. So you're going to be communicating emotionally this month. And I see very slow because the Knight of Pentacles is very slow earth. 
but I see that here with the six, the six of wands. So there's something here with your lifestyle. You're going to make a decision here that you know, six is lifestyle, right? So money's going to come in. It might be very slow, but money's coming in and you will be very victorious and celebratory over this. This is, I like this wand energy. All the other wands are very, so after all this fighting, you're going to take all those wands and they're going to be hip hip hooray. Instead of up in the air because they want to knock you down they're actually going to be celebrating so there's something here with your enemies becoming your friends as well taurus so yeah very slow moving celebratory and that just might mean that you as an earth sign feel very slow moving right now like i'm waiting and waiting and waiting on this kind of victorious feeling but i'm telling you there's so much emotional work that has to be done in november for you taurus so that by capricorn season you feel that earthy self and then we have temperance and judgment so sagittarius season um the sun's gonna move into sagittarius on the 21st and there's a lot of archangels here i see two angels in this picture the trumpet is playing for you taurus it's really trying to wake you up passionately it's waking you up it's calling you out of your your emotional grave to kind of wake up as an earth sign so that you can balance these kind of things this is a Sagittarius coming up, so some of you may be called to kind of like Sagittarius energy or fire energy, or this could be just judgment coming in the month of Sagittarius, um, in this month when Sagittarius season is here. But I see a lot here about balancing that earth and water. So keep one foot on the earth, Taurus, and put the other in water. Isn't that amazing? Keep one foot on the earth and the other in that kind of intuitive, emotional. And then we have the Page of Swords. So, you know, this is truth coming in after all that. This is truth coming in. And I had the Magician underneath that. So I want to get one or maybe two. But let's go ahead. I'm going to put all these back just so the right card can come up. And we are going to validate this Choices card for you before, you, before we leave here, Taurus. Because I didn't want these videos to be too long. But my videos are always our. I got lots of stuff to say. I got lots of messages. I kind of just listen to spirit. So the thing that you are choosing between is the Seven of Cups and the Two of Wands. So, you know, you are an earth sign, Taurus, and this is you, you know, I told you there's a lot about you spending time alone. Remember the, the Libra card and the Virgo card? So there's something here about isolating yourself with the world you're in. Isolate yourself. You have the world in your hand. You are an earth sign. You know, this is about choices as well down here with these flowers crossing each other. So you really want to think about the passionate. This is a decision. Anytime you see two of swords, two of wands, two of cups, it's about a decision. Two means decision. So this is interesting here that, you know, you. it does seem to me that you're holding on to a certain passionate beginning. You know, how he's holding this one, but this one's kind of posted right there. So to me in this reading, there's something here that you've turned your back on in the past that you might still be thinking about. You know, you're holding this new wand in a way as if it's this old passion that you've had. So there's something here about old and new passion kind of mixing to be your present moment. So stay in the present moment when it comes to these choices because you're gonna take flight soon. And this is this is a person who is out looking out at earth and water. You can't see it because it's in black and white, but there's water there and there's lots of earth and mountains. So this is someone who is grounded in their emotions they're thinking of all the physical mountains they've had to climb all the financial struggles and all the relationship struggles all any struggles you've been through taurus you need to kind of meditate and this man has kind of walked on top of a building he's on top of a building standing out so there's something about being higher right now remember that card i had out where all the people were underneath him trying to fight so you're in a very high position and when you do this, you're able to look down at things, not in a negative way, but in a way where you can just kind of look out and see your surroundings. You know what I mean? So you're going to look out at the emotions you've been through. You're going to look out and it's so that you can see it all. You need to see earth and water right now, Taurus. It's very important that you do. And it's interesting that earth, water and fire is in this picture because two of wands is a fire energy. So there's some type of passionate decision here. This is both clarifying the um, choices card. It is interesting that this card would come up for choices. Okay, the eight of cups, there, this is the seven of cups, but it's interesting that I say the eight of cups because this is the eight of cups. So we have the seven and the eight of cups. Some of you may be choosing between value still. 
you are an earth sign and you do appreciate, you know, money, finances, houses, stuff like that. In this card, there there's something in each cup. Do you remember how in your reading there was those cups that were knocked over? Well, this is someone who has entered in a new realm. He is not on earth. He is somewhere subconsciously. And he has come across all these cups. That's why he's kind of like, his hand's like, whoa, like, whoa, what is this realm? And that's exactly how you would be, Taurus, if you entered this realm. You'd be like, whoa, what is this? Like, hold on a second. Like, I, this isn't realistic, but it's okay. Because there's knowledge here. There's, there's riches here. There is home stability here. There's all kinds of things here. You need to determine what kind of cup you're going to choose from. And you have all these options. This is the option card. When this card comes up in a love reading, this isn't a love reading. But when it does come up, it talks about having multiple suitors. Okay, so we want to apply that to the choices card. So you just have multiple choices. Like, I thought maybe this was one or the other. Like, no, this isn't just choosing between chicken and, and, and like, pizza anymore. This is choosing between chicken, pizza, Alfredo, spaghetti. Like, good luck, Taurus. Good luck choosing between all that stuff because it's all good. And I am so indecisive as a Taurus moon, especially about food. Oh, man. So I'm seeing here that you have a lot to choose from. You have this kind of cup that will offer you riches. This cup that will offer you celebratory information. This cup that will offer you passion and love. And this other cup that will offer you a home. And this cup will offer you knowledge. Like, good luck. It, it depends on all of you. So take a good look at this card and just kind of subconsciously, this could be a sub, okay, so if it's not that you have multiple choices, it's that this is a subconscious choice that you have to make. So this could be the subconscious choice not to drink anymore. I don't know. This could be the subconscious choice to not eat certain foods anymore or subconscious choice not to talk to this person anymore. So I'm seeing for some of you, this is a choice of so many different choices. Like you have at least six different, seven different things to choose from. For others of you, it is a choice between two different things, but it's subconscious. So I don't know the logic behind that, but I'm seeing that there's a lot here to work with and it's very subconscious. And it was interesting that I mentioned the Eight of Cups because this reminds me of a Scorpio energy. I love this card. And this talks about walking away from everything materialistic in order to reach a spiritual awakening. So it's interesting that all these cups have all this stuff to offer you you know what i mean emotions 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 and you're just like you know like you're stuck here in this realm thinking right you're you're indecisive you are you're torn and you're confused and it doesn't make any logical sense and then eventually because it's the eight of cups and then i mean the seven of cups and then the eight of cups so after this card in tarot this card comes immediately after and this man has he's chose the mountains you know so this is you taurus walking away from you know, the things that have made you emotional. You see those three cups up there and how the rest are on the bottom? Those could be that those three cups that were knocked over in the other part of your reading. Because I see this kind of figure. He's like, whatever, dude. Like, I don't want anything material anymore. Like, this is not about money anymore to me. This isn't about my house or anything materialistic. I want spiritual. See this moon here? So that Taurus full moon really awakens some of you. And it might complete something around the gemini full moon next month because moons go full to full full to full new moon full moon new moon so there's something here about the moon cycles as well and and it's something here about emotions so you taurus i see you making a certain decision here to kind of leave there was a lot here about leaving this month and you're you know you can't expect everyone to understand why it is that you're leaving things. Like, you just, this man knows what he feels and thinks. Like, he just knows the deal. He's like, no, I know exactly what this is going to get me. And it's not as much as I'll get in the mountains. So he's going to walk off the face of the earth. Like, he's walking up. And he wants intuition. He wants spirituality. So perhaps all the emotions that I felt you feeling in this reading, Taurus, you know, at the end of it, you're going to pick up all the pieces to you or perhaps leave them behind, right? But either way, they're not going to have as much power over you as they did in the beginning of the month. I see you really being a completely different person at the end of this month and at the end of this. So I see the Aries card here and the Wheel of Fortune. So who you are is changing. Some of you may be dealing with an Aries, but this is just a fiery energy, right? So this is about who you are. You see the Rams there? This is also holding the world in your hand 
So, you know, he has this magic wand. You have all the power in the world. You're on this throne here. You know, this is Aries energy. Aries is your 12th house, Taurus. So this is kind of like subconscious, who you are at a subconscious level. And when you think about who you are as a subconscious level and the fact that all this is changing because of these emotions, it's definitely going to bring in this kind of energy. This person figured out who they were and they left everything because of it, right? And he figured out or she figured out who he was, she or he was because he isolated himself. He found balance. He made the decisions. He summoned what he needed to summon. And this is your outcome. The, the emperor or the empress and the wheel of fortune, which is good luck. This is the wheel of fortune changing. You are on this card, Taurus, and you're right here. All the fixed energies. So right now, you know, the fixed energies are really changing. And I do want to let you know that there will be some pain because of this. You know, we do have the tower and the three of swords. So this could be pain falling down. But this is an ending finally happening. A painful ending finally happening for you. You know, and it may result in you kind of standing on your own. So instead of sharing, you know, this celebration, you might marry yourself. You know, you might love, you start finding, this is like self-love. That's why I see this card at, these cards coming out together. Or you moving alone or just kind of being alone, whereas there were people all around you. But you might just want to be alone right now, you know. That's what this Aries card is saying too. That you just, so much is going on. There's so much changing right now. That after all this shit, you know, and this looks more so December to me or something that has already happened, but this is coming up for you, Taurus, but I'm going to leave this Emperor card at the bottom of your deck because that's what was there, and I'm going to leave that with you so that you can take some of that kind of power and self-fulfillment because Aries know exactly who they are. So this is about, just know, Taurus, this is all happening so that you can be protected so that you can be powerful and have the world in your hands and so that you can be exactly who you are and you're changing that's why the the wheel of fortune card came out with the aries card and I, it came out i happened to look down at the same time as i was talking about who you are changing so the emperor inside you the empress inside you is changing with the wheel of fortune and there are certain things happening in our world right now taurus so we just we kind of have to um deal with these things as best as we can Woo, we had the moon card flap out for you so i don't know taurus something with the pisces uh something with intuition you know your feelings again your emotions something because we got cancer at the bottom you want to be passionate about your emotions and things because it's coming up for you so that was your reading taurus for november and i guess before we go i'm going to show you this movement card again because if there was anything in the reading that kind of hit home and that, that kind of scared you or you didn't like it, just know that you are moving from all these energies. And because of this movement, you're going to turn out and transform into a person that you're meant to be. And it's a person who's more emotionally aware. It's a person who's more grounded because of how emotionally aware. That's what Scorpio season, I believe, is teaching you. And, you know, you're going to be moving from certain decisions. You're moving away from that fragmented feeling. You know, some of you are moving to and from emotions, and that's, you know, up to you and your own birth charts. But just know that you are, you know, there's that strong horse there that I'm seeing. And that horse can, you know, it looks like he's about to head into the mountains as well. Like, he doesn't care the obstacles in front of his way. He's just going to make a decision and go. So that's what I have for you, Taurus. Um, that was a very interesting reading. I'll definitely apply it to my moon when I can and where I can. Other than that, guys, you know, I would just really heed my intuition through this. I would really pay attention to the way that I feel if I was a Taurus right now. Because it seems as if that is what's going to lead your way. Um, and don't worry, you know, the sun is going to enter Sagittarius. Where kind of all these questions we've had so far, all these questions we've kind of had this this far into the year, um, we'll get the answers to them. And they'll be, you know, more so higher answers. And, um answers that are kind of based on philosophy and higher thinking and it's going to expand the knowledge that we have towards the obstacles we've had in life so far so just this is just the beginning things are about to get really deep in a good way and i believe that this will all make sense you know everything happens for a reason so um 
you know, Taurus, I like you. I like you guys a lot. I like doing your readings because I have a Taurus moon and I relate to you guys so well. So um, I'd appreciate it if you guys would comment below if this reading, um, you know, Scorpio season, even as a water sign, it can be kind of hazy to me or it can be, you know, water doesn't ever need to give you a clear answer. But um, I would appreciate it if you would message me or comment below, I mean, and let me know if this applied to you or if it related to you, if it was helpful to you. Just so I can know, you know, as a reader, I take these things very seriously. All I can do is kind of sit down and follow my intuition and it's not going to apply to everyone. But if it did apply to you, I would love your feedback. All right, Taurus, hang in there. Keep it real and I'll talk to you in December.